to 60 Minutes of Mule and Donkey Talk. My name is Dave, this is Steve Edwards, and welcome to our weekly online clinic where that is all we do, talk about mules and donkeys. Steve, uh, yeah. you're not in your normal cowboy gear today. What yeah. you been working on? Well, it's kind of part of cowboy gear. When you're ranching, you learn to do all kinds of stuff. And right now, my generator in my uh, toy hauler, we're going deer hunting this weekend, and my generator's not working, so I've been taking apart the carburetor and cleaning it, and and usually this thing works like a champ, but i afraid I, I hadn't started it for a while, and I paid the price, but anyway, we're cleaning things up and getting it organized, so today is wrench day. You got equipment, you got to fix it, you know? Got equipment, you got to fix it. I completely agree. So uh, real quick, folks, uh, we're so glad that you're here. Every week we get a, a great group of people coming in asking questions, and uh, we just answer as many as we can. Last week we got through every single one. We typically get through all of them. Uh, every now and again there's a linger that um, you know we may not be able to get to here or there, but uh, that is, uh, is what we do is answer the questions. So uh, if this is your first time ever hanging out with us, um, welcome. Again, my name's Dave. This is Steve. Steve's been working with the mules for uh, 40 years coming up on here. And, uh, and I've been working with Steve for uh, just over 10 of those years. Um, if you would like to participate, uh, we want that. We want you to, to spend some time with us and to let us know that you're watching. So the first thing that we ask is that in the comment section uh, on YouTube or Facebook, excuse me, you put your name and where you're watching from. If you want to throw in there what the weather's like, uh, we won't uh, we won't mind that one bit. It's always nice to hear what things are like around the country and around the world, for that matter. The yeah, second thing yeah. we ask that you put your question in the comment section. Uh, we want any and every question uh, that you've got. No questions, dumb. No question has been asked too many times. Um, you know, uh, we want to be able to answer and get you what you need so that you can move forward with your animal. Uh, and create a more enjoyable experience for yourself, for the animal, and uh, the friends and family members who you enjoy the animals with. Uh, and the third thing is we ask that you share the broadcast. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can tag friends, you can tag family, just like you can in any other post. Uh, if you want to click the share button below on Facebook, you can do that as well. And then finally, uh, on YouTube and Facebook, you can just grab the link, the URL, share that URL with anybody who you think would appreciate. They can watch live or they can come back and they can watch the broadcast later. So let me, I'm bringing up my, uh, bringing up my um, uh, screen here. We've got Susan from uh, Kingman, Arizona, 75 here today. It's been a little too warm here in the, uh, in the Phoenix area. It's been, what's it like out there on the ranch today, Steve? Uh, it's 82 right now. I've been working on my generator, been under shelf, but under, under shelf. It's a little a bit warmer for you. Like shape, yeah. Susan's a police officer, by the way. She's sheriff uh, in the sheriff's department up there. So I always like to thank people who, who uh, do the protecting our, our rights and this sort of thing. Absolutely. And the bad guys, you know. Absolutely. And we love having her here week after week. Susan, yes. great. Thank you for spending time with us. Uh, Linda's watching Howdy Do from Theo the Red Mule and Linda the Mule Servant from freezing rural central Ohio. I heard that from somebody Ooh. else today. They said uh, they got some snow, and it is frigid, so I will take y'all's word for it. Uh, yeah. Warren is watching from Oklahoma, and uh, Rebecca is watching from Chile, North Carolina. She says it's 37 degrees there. That's, yeah. That is too cold for my blood. It's Scott, too, I understand. I had some other people contact me in that area. It's, said they couldn't believe it. It's this time of year there's snow on the ground. You know? Yeah. Yep. So out here, we're like thinking it's too hot for November. Elsewhere, they're like, wow, snow's already coming. But uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, and there we've got uh, Scott over on YouTube watching. So folks, uh, just in the next couple minutes, if you're watching, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. Let us know that you're here. Steve and I can talk anytime. This time is really all about you, and we just like knowing that you're there watching and that you're benefiting uh, and enjoying what we're putting out. Let's get into our first question today. This one comes from Scott. So Scott's watching on YouTube. He's sending this message. He says, at what age do mules mature and stop growing in height? I have three-year-old horse mule that I've been raising since birth and his mom was 15 two hands. The sire was a half standard, uh, half mammoth jack. He's now 14 two. I'm hoping for at least 15 hands. Will he grow until he's five? He will grow until he's seven. Seven is usually the magic mark. I've um, 
uh, and mentally and physically, by the way. But I've I have uh, I run tapes on my mules and uh, you know weighing them all the time, keeping an eye on their weight, uh, watching their teeth and bone structure, and you can watch their teeth coming in, and that's how you know how they're aging and this sort of thing, and you can just see their their mental stability change. When you're hitting that three and a half range, by the way, <laughs> it's like having a teenager around. You can't talk to them, and boy, they can be pretty abrasive at times. Yep, there you go. So hopefully that gives you what you're uh, needing, Scott. I went ahead and I put in the comment section on YouTube, Scott, I said, hey, since you're watching, I'm not going to reply back to the email. You're here right now. Um, but if you do have any follow-up questions, you can post them right here. You can send a message back in. So thanks for that first question, Scott. Really appreciate it. Uh, folks, if you haven't typed in your question yet, go ahead and do so. We'll get to that real short here. Um, Kathy sent a message in and asked, Hi, Steve, I have a question for you about your breast collar. Could that setup of running tug through the pummel strap benefit a horse as well? I currently use an either strap uh, to keep the collar up off the shoulders because the D-rings in the saddle keep the collar low. Thanks, yeah. Kathy. Yeah, we got to remember those D rings are placed for kind of the average horse. And does my breast collar work on horses? I've got a lot of people that use them. They love them. Uh, I don't see why in the world you couldn't. It's going to follow the slope of the shoulder and this sort of thing. So uh, I've never had anybody tell me they didn't like it. Everybody pretty much loves it. So, yep, give it a try. Um, so on that, the, the, the big difference, for folks who don't know, the big difference between uh, what they'll find in your breast collar and what they'll find in other more traditional breast collars is yours allows for a fluid full range of motion um, and does not tug upon the saddle pulling the saddle forward whereas a pulling collar it will be hard attached to the saddle and so uh, since the mule is very uh, let's see uh, is the mule vertical or lateral in his mule? Very lateral in their walking. Very lateral in their walking. What they wind up doing is they wind up bumping that breast collar forward, and if it's attached, it's going to pull the saddle forward along with it. So before you know it, you're riding up on the neck of your mule. So mm -hmm. instead of having a, a pulling collar, Steve has this strap that goes through the hole on the pummel, and so it's this leather strap, and then you take the breast collar, and you slide the breast collar through that strap so that as the mule walks, the breast collar actually swings, uh, shifts back and forth rather than tug back and right. forth. So that's the difference. Um, is there a reason why you would want a pulling collar on a horse? Is there is there just something different about them that makes it okay for a horse and 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 you know different than the mule? No, I I just I never have liked those pulling collars. You know, in a lot of ways, when they first come out, it, it's a better way than, than going into the rings of the saddle. But those are all too low, you know. And so the thing about my breast collar is that each side is right and left, and it does move like this, and it follows the slope of the shoulder. Like I said, I've had, you know, clinics to where people have seen them use them and said, well, I think I'd like to try that on my horse. And I, I never have anybody call me and say, hey, it just didn't work. Everybody's been, you know, been pretty happy. And I always like to know, Dave, you know, what worked and what didn't. I want to know from other people, you know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see here. Facebook is acting a little bit funny to me right now. I'm seeing some pop up, and then I'm seeing those same ones disappear and different ones pop up. So I'm going to try to figure out what the deal is here. But okay. um, that being the case, Jermaine left a question before we went live. Jermaine had this question. Uh, Sticky mule refuses to go, f stinking mule refuses to go forward. My usually perfect mule did not want to go forward. I do <coughs> not ride with spurs and I don't want to smack her. What is the solution? I tried moving her hip and shoulder but only got a step. Finally, I smacked her and she did walk out but I don't want to have to resort to this. I want her to walk from a gentle squeeze. What is the solution? She is perfect from the ground watching from Rio Rico, Arizona. Rio Rico. Oh, I wonder if that's Colleen. Who is it? It says Jermaine. Oh, Jermaine, Jermaine. Fresno Low. Yeah, I've got to, down in, in Rio Rico, I've got a ranch down there, the Baca Ranch, that they're just getting meals in and I've been helping them. Okay, let's go back. Spurs, extremely important. I do not put my boots on unless they got spurs. I ride with spurs all the time. 
Do I use them all the time? On a rare occasion. Here's the thing. When the meal knows that they're there, they will respond a whole lot better than if they're not there. So here's what you do. You ask with your calf, right, left. You tail with the side of your stirrups, right, left. And you demand with your spur, right, left. Notice I said right, left. Right brain, left brain. Not both brains at the same time. That's where they tend to balk. So you want to... Yes, always, 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 always ride with spurs. Otherwise, you're going to end up to going to get dead sighted and you won't be able to move them at all because they'll just put you on ignore. You know, it's kind of like uh, when I was younger, we used to have something called a whipping. Now they call it abuse. <laughs> but when, when, when they said, we're going to go get the scope, go get the switch, your choice, you, uh, you, you, you aren't sure got the idea, you know. So you got to ride with spurs. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You know, pretty soon the mule's going to say, I'm going to put you on ignore. We're not doing any good here. You know? Yeah, the, uh, the old switch tree. <laughs> I, I remember the switch tree. I'd go out. I'd pick out my own switch. I'd have to take all of the, uh, the leaves off of it, take the knife and all that jazz. Wow. They, uh, my dad eventually had the tree pulled out because it died. That was a glorious day for me. I was well. I mean, I guess I could have just listened and obeyed, but I was like, "Yeah, yeah let's get that thing pulled up out of the ground." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. The next question we have here. This one comes from Sarah. Sarah sent in an email. Says, "I have a question about my mule. I have a residential farm in North Carolina and bought a little uh, uh, bought a little over a year ago. Have always boarded my horses and ridden all my life. I bought my mule as a companion." And he has been wonderful. I recently changed his stock sweet feed from TS to my horse's feed, which is tribute, calm, and easy with GC. He has been a little agitated, cranky, food aggressive. I am yep. thinking feed. What would be your expert opinion? Not a lot of horse trainers and really my vet know too much about mules. I really appreciate your time and assistance. I look forward to hearing back from you. FYI, my mule's name is, Steve, get this, my mule's name is Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. What advice do we have for Sarah and Hollywood? Do, do you happen to know what the Apostle Paul, what the name of his mule was? Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote a lot of books in the Bible, right? A lot of them. Yeah, and here's on the road to Damascus, right? Riding along, and he gets knocked off his mule because he was being a bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. he, his name of that mule was Ismi. He was always hollering, woe is me. <laughs> that's good. I had that's to put good. that one in there. You know? I had right, to put that one folks. in there. That, but that's yeah, not your that's feed good. advice for Sarah, though, is it? No, that's not. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we named a couple mules is me over the years. But anyway, uh, here's the deal, folks. Feed makes a tremendous difference. Go read my article, Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. Read it. You will probably see your mule in there and go verbatim. This is what happened. They do not, do not, do not need any sweet feed, especially sweet feed. It's one of the worst ones to colic them. And they don't need any type of feed that has high uh, carbohydrates in it. So I'm not familiar with the feed that you have. But if you see a disposition change in your mule, always go to feed. Always go to feed. Uh, rarely does it have to do with the weather changing, things like this. You know, sure, when it gets cold, they're feeling a little frisky and they want to move around so they warm up. That's one thing. But when they start changing their attitudes, folks, go back to your feed. And do not feed your mules and horses together. Don't do that. Them mules will be subservient to the horse and back off of the feed and let the horse have it. Now, there are some of them. They'll just say, nope, I ain't sharing with the horse. By the fact, I'm going to take the horses too. It's rare, but they're subservient. So get rid of the sweet feed, put them in a separate place. Each one of your mules should have a separate place to feed, separate place to drink. And that way you can keep it on them. Folks, that is your clock. That is your calendar to tell you how well your mules are. That's it is. Your water and your feed. And then that's the two things. And the third part Watch what comes at the end of the water in the feed. <laughs> you know, the road apples on the ground and the, and the, uh, and the urine. Keep an eye on all those colors and this sort of thing. So 
there you are. When you get a change attitude, you've changed the feed. There we go. Read, read um, the article. I'll put it in the comment section there so folks can yeah. check it out. Uh, Doris had a real quick question. Uh, Doris says, do you offer clinic uh, for participants to bring a mule to Queen Valley to be a part of the clinic? And the answer is yes, Doris. And Steve and I are working on finalizing some dates for early 2020 to do yeah. a clinic out at Queen Valley Mule Ranch. Now, the, the ranch itself is uh, is closed um, nearly all the days of the year. There's uh, there's no there's no mules on the on the ranch right now. Steve does so much travel, going to different locations, working with uh, people, you know, one on one, and in these clinics and expos and, and that sort of thing, um, that it's just hard to keep animals there on the ranch and and do them any sort of good, right? It's just not fair to them. Um, so the ranch is typically closed, but we do uh, have plans on doing some clinics this next year and opening up the ranch. Ain't that right, Steve? Oh, Steve's blowing someone right there calling about bringing you out to uh, bringing you out to Europe, right? Someone calling about bringing you out to Asia. Asia, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I got one going. I'm going to go to Africa, but this is Casa Grande. Somebody called. I thought I had my phone turned off. Oh, but. a little closer, a little closer. But yeah, we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some stuff going on at the ranch this next year, aren't we? Yes, sir. We are. It's gonna be yes, good. sir. What? Oh, there we are, right there. I'll probably come. There we are. Gotcha. You can see me now. <laughs> yeah, I can see you now. Yeah, so we'll have some more information. So just be sure to keep checking muleranch.com. And if you're not getting Steve's emails, um, we send out an email every single week with just new information, uh, blogs, products, things like that, things that folks find helpful. Uh, make sure you get that. You can send me a message, support at muleranch.com, and I'll get that taken care of. Um, all right, let's go to uh, next comment here. We've got David watching over on YouTube. From Kentucky, cold 35 degrees there. Man, I'm sure they're going to be getting some ice storms here very soon. Uh, Nola is watching from Australia. All right, we've gone international. Good to have you here, Nola. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, Kate is watching from Queensland, Australia. So we've gone international there too. I know, where's the bell? It's halfway across the room. I need to get that thing. Uh, hi, Steve. Listening from Florida. What do you think? This is Rob. What do you think about transitioning from the come-along hitch to a bozale? Uh what are your thoughts about a bozala? Am I saying that right, bozale? It's actually a bozale. Uh, another Bozales. name is bo bozel. You know. Okay, for mules uh, at all. Just, yeah. What do you think no, about this, transitioning this, from come along to a bozale? No, you don't want to use uh, a bozal to do your your groundwork with. It'll be way too tough with them. Uh, you you want to do your your bozal uh, in a sur single. Uh, and you want to uh, let the mule learn how to frame himself up with it. I love using the Sir Single, I mean the Bozal, uh, when I'm riding. Uh, so it really makes them refined. If you understand the Bozal, absolutely use it, but not for groundwork. It'd be, it'll be way too tough. Now, this is also going to depend, I got to say, this is all going to depend, also going to depend on the size of the Bozal. So, you know, we have our real fine bozals are about as big around as my finger. And then we have our bigger bozals that are probably about an inch of circumference and then some others in between. So it just depends on your transition series on your bozales, you know. Uh, but I would not use it doing groundwork. All right. There we go. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Good question, Rob. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Yolanda says, I ride without spurs. She don't need them. She is fast enough. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> hey, folks, if uh, if you know what works for you, if you what's that? I said just just keep thinking that. You know, I get a kick out of people say they haven't used spurs, and then one day they need them. Yeah, then that mule's got you. You know, I uh, they may be fast, but they can be faster if they know you got spurs on. One of the things that I appreciate about the the way you integrate those into what you do um, is uh, is it's a, it's not the only way you communicate. It is part of the way that you communicate, yeah. and it all starts yeah. with communicating from the ground, being able to do that. And now it just gives you another tool to use when you need it, um, and when you do need it, you've got it there. So uh, so yep. very good. We we love you, Yolanda. Thank you for chiming in. We love having that. Uh, Linda says, can you recommend your favorite type of spur? Well, actually, my spurs. We did a we did a show last week. I'll put a link to that. And, yeah, and my my uh, spurs are actually all handmade. 
uh, and so they're custom made for different times. You see, there's there's times that you would use one type of row. There's times you'd use one type of shank. And so it all depends on understanding the mule and what you're looking for. So just a spur uh, is not quite enough. I've got probably, oh, I probably got a dozen spurs that I use at different times. Uh, but I always use uh, a spur shelf, a boot with a spur shelf on it, which we did last week and, and did some demonstration on it. Very good. I just put a link to that in the comment section. Folks, it's our live stream, uh, live clinic from last week. And um, you'll just have to find, if you look down below in the video, you'll see a chapter. All of our live streams, they have chapter markers. So if you're looking for something in particular, you can just scan and look at the table of contents for that video and just click on the time marker. So if you see something and it says spurs, and the time says 1342. You just click on 1342, and it'll take you right there in the video. So I just put that link there. Uh, Y'all can yep. check that out. Great video last week. Uh, where we talked quite a bit about spurs. Um, yep. Let's see. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, Warren is watching. He says, what kind of feed can you give them? And I think he's talking about the mules. What kind of feed can you give the mules? Well, you know, first of all, the feed that I've used all these years is made right here in Arizona uh, from Lakin uh, uh, milling. And the, the pellet has everything that you need in it, uh, vitamins and minerals and this sort of thing. It's what I found seems to work really good for uh, a mule that's just standing in the corral five days out of the week or a mule that's working five days out of the week. And it's called Lake and Light. Now, you can go to my website and read the, the, video, the article called Mules Can Stand Prosperity. And you can see the ingredients. You can take that ingredients to your feed store and they will see what they have. Otherwise, a good quality grass hay uh, is great. No alfalfa. Uh, Timothy grass is good. Some of your orchard grass. Here's the thing, folks. The downside is with this feed is we don't really know what's in hay, you know. Yeah, we, we buy hay, and yes, it's hay, but what field did it buy it from? What time of the year did you buy it from? That all makes a difference in the amount of carbohydrates, and that's the monster that you're fighting with feed. In order to keep your animals, your mules and your donkeys, uh, so that they don't have grass founder or they don't have the big wide place on their neck or the... Or the, uh, the uh, Fat pockets being uh, tough, um, you know, that, that feed's really important. So you can always test your feed if you just take it into these colleges, a lot of them that have uh, uh, farm uh, classes and this sort of thing. They can test that feed. Very good. I just put a link in the comment section to Mules Can't Stand Prosperity so you all can yeah. check that out. And then also to Steve's Feed Talk video where he goes through a lot of uh, these questions, goes through the answers in great detail. Uh, very good video. It's free. Just uh, go into your email. We'll send you a link to where you can get it. And uh, super, super helpful video. Um, let's see here. We've got Trisha watching from Arlington, Washington. Good to have you here, Trisha. Uh, we've got, uh, man, Facebook is just jumping all around today. We've got James watching from Holden, Missouri. We've got Carla watching from Gunnison, Colorado. We've got Jan watching from Cave Creek. Our backyard right here in Arizona. We've got Rebecca. Hello, Steve and Dave, watching from Chile, North Carolina. 37 degrees. Yeah, yeah that does sound pretty cold. Uh, and Warren, who asked that question, he's watching from Oklahoma, so we're glad to have you here. Um, let's see, who else do we have here with us? We've got Cowboy Can uh Connecticut, 26 degrees. That's yeah. even chillier. Uh, yeah. Susan, let's see, Susan says she's retired. Retired with a big exclamation point. She did. Well, congratulations, Susan. That's good for her. That's awesome. Good she accomplishment. Spend more there. time riding the mules and spend time with her daughter and her mom. You know, I'm and, sure she's looking forward yeah. to that. Who wouldn't be, yeah. right? Yeah. You're right. Uh, let's see here. Dee is watching from Camp Verde. Good to have you here, Dee. Jesse from Colorado Springs. Kathy from Cotati. Uh, we've got Karen uh, from Raymond, California watching. We've got Richard Matthews. Morton Chaplin Steve. Yeah, that's my captain. That's Boy, captain last night right you there. talk about Captain of the Fire Department. You talk about communication. Yeah. Last night was some of the toughest training 
mentally as well as physically uh, that we've had. We had a two-story building, and our masks were blacked out where you couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had our uh, our S SBCAs on our back, you know, for our for our oxygen, the oxygen mask. And we had to crawl along the hose, go up the stairs, and the idea was to search for victims in the fire. And it was, I mean, you talk, it was, it was flat, tough, dark. We had several rooms to have to check. And, you know, we had fire all over the place. What they had was yellow lights going and stuff. And I mean, it was, it was tedious, but oh, watching these guys go through and do it. And remember, these guys are all volunteers. There's only been a couple of these guys that were, that are actually paid. And they're going in there and trying to learn how to help people and save them in case of fire. Wow. Well, that's right. That's right. And so for those who don't know, uh, you probably picked up on it. Steve is a volunteer firefighter out there for the Queen Valley Mule Ranch Fire Department. Um, I think how many how many paid firefighters? There's just a handful. Aren't There's there? three. Three paid three. firefighters. And how yep. many engines do you have? One or two? We have, we have one engine. We're looking to – we'd like to get another. We have one engine. We have uh, one ambulance, uh, two tenders, and uh, uh, two uh, what you know, that are they're basically brush trucks. We just we go out and fight uh, fires that are in, you know out in the in the in wild open spaces. Yep, there you go. So uh, so that's what Steve's talking about. If if you're kind of saying, hey, I was here for mules and donkeys, why are we talking about firefighters? Well, number one, because we appreciate them and we honor them and we recognize them. Number two. Steve is a volunteer firefighter, so that's where that's where that is. Um, let's see, right here we've got some more questions coming in. Um, we've got a question come in here from. Okay, I'm having to scroll all the way back up. Uh, this one's from Carla. So Carla, thank you so much for taking some time. Carla says, "I'm wondering the best way to discipline my mule who likes to be mouthy. He bites all kind mm. of things, unties himself, and also this question. He doesn't like me to touch him on this particular spot on his back. He will turn his head and let me know he is not happy about that. In my country, people do a lot of chiropractic work on their animals. Do, uh, do, your, do you do that sort of thing? Thanks. Colorado, still nice. Uh, Carla, still nice in Colorado. Yeah. Okay, so let's find out where this spot is. Is it the three places on the spine coming off of the hip and coming onto the back? Is that the spot? Now, do I, do I believe in chiropractors? Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get that chiropractor out and folks, I like to have them once a year go through and, and check out. And it does a wonderful job in their mind. So now here's the thing. If the meal is trying to bite at you because they don't like a certain spot touched, then let's find out what the problem is because the mule is probably been pretty nice, probably pin their ears to start with. You got to remember they ask tail demand. So they pin their ears. They're asking you not to. They pin their ears and switch their tail. They're telling you not to. And then they demand upon you. They're going to bite you. So they've been asking you to, to, hey, pay attention. So, Carla, where's, where's that spot at? Let's see if she's put a uh, put a response there yet. Um, it's more by his withers. Oh, what, by the wither. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Here's the question for you, Carla. Do you have only a front cinch on your saddle? Why does that matter? Matters tremendously because people that only tighten the front cinch down, they're putting pressure upon the sixth and seventh rib, and all that area in behind the scapula is moving all the time, moving, moving, moving. And when we tighten the front cinch down, we end up restricting that area and it gives them a lot of discomfort. And this meal is simply telling you, hey, uh, you're making me super uncomfortable and I need you to do something with it. And that's all he's trying to do. He's being nice to you. And he before probably told you by, uh, by pinning his ears or pinning his ears and swishing the tail. And now biting at you is the demanding part. You need to listen to your meal, you know? There we go. So we'll wait to hear back from Carla. I'm sure she's yeah. typing in. 
uh, getting yeah. back. So while we're doing that, we'll go through and check and see uh, who else we've got hanging out with us today. A lot of people watching today. We're glad to have you all here. Uh, yeah. Linda says, I have Amish neighbors who say you should not start a mule to carry a rider or pack or pull a load until age 10. What do you make of that, Steve? Oh, no, that's... You know, that used to be the old way of thinking, uh, and, I, and that's all incorrect. Listen, folks, their first seven years is when, you're gonna, when they're going to learn the most. They're going to build a foundation. The first three and a half years is where, they, where they put the, you put the things in their mind that they have to have, you know. Uh, and so, you, you know, I don't write them until they're two years and uh, two and a half years, two years and seven or eight months. Uh, then I do ride them, but I don't put a lot of hard rides on them. Uh, but no, 10 years is that's way too long. You know, that's um, half the average lifespan. So they'll by seven years old, folks, they have their growth. They have their mind. Everything's pretty much right. But in the meantime, just like just like young people and young animals, the best time to teach them is when they're young. They can take in and do the best. Yep. Uh, so Carla wrote back, she says, I've been using your saddle, uh, your Steve Edwards saddle, but I don't know about much about where he was prior to me. So what this sounds like to me, Steve, is it might yeah. be a good opportunity to have Carla take some pictures, all saddled up, all tacked up, maybe send those over to you and get some coaching on, you know, the way to, to kind of optimize where everything's placed and how it's adjusted. What do you say? Yeah, that, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'm always willing to look at pictures and take a look, see, so... Carla, how long have you had the mule? That's one thing. And if that mule is really touchy around that area, you might really want to make sure that you don't have that front sense, nothing much more than baby snug. But you're right. And then are you using my saddle pad as well? So that'll be a good question. And Carla, do take Steve up on that offer uh, to send him a text message with pictures uh, because yes. one of the things that we have found uh, especially with Steve Saddles, if his folks will get it, they'll throw it up on there and they'll say, well, it don't work. Well, not so fast. Um, we're doing a completely new thing, just like with the old way of thinking about the mule in that you know, you've know got to wait 10 years before you start to load anything up. That's the old way. Um, mm -hmm. What we've learned in the last 30, uh, last 35 years is that mules and donkeys are completely unique and different in so many ways. From yep. the horse, and so in that way, a new way of thinking has had to be become developed. And what we've seen just just through the interaction we've had with people here is when you begin respecting the uniqueness of these animals, and you begin looking for ways to cater to the way they were created and the way they were designed, it completely changes the way you interact with them. And so, um, and so, it's it's really really good to go ahead and make sure that Steve can go through and do some coaching and you wind up getting everything out of that animal uh, yeah. that, that's there to be had. Because um, yeah. if you're going about it with the old ways, uh, then you're not going to get the benefit of everything that's been discovered in the last three decades. Right, Steve? Yeah. Right, exactly. And, and the perfect point is yesterday I had a lady send me a picture of a mule. She says, I'm going to buy this mule and he's up in Washington and, uh, you know, will your saddle work for it? It happened to be, Dave, ha, my saddle was on that mule. Huh. And this, this saddle was over 20 years old, huh. you know, and, and I knew it just by the looks of it and this sort of thing. It was back when I used to have billets on the back of saddle. And I, and I, I called her back. I, instead of texting her or using the, using the computer, I called her back and I said, yeah. I said, matter of fact, the saddle that's sitting on that mule right now is my saddle. It's over 20 years old. I said, but here's the problem, and here's the kicker, Dave. They had it on wrong. Yeah. The breast collar was a horse breast collar. The breeching was just barely hanging there, and the saddle was sitting on top of the scapula, and the front cinch was up underneath the legs. Yep. And the mule was paying the price, you know. But yet, she said, I, she said well, that's great because people said they've been using this saddle on all their mules, you know, for a lot of years. So, yep, there we are. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the comment section to our mule saddle training course. And this basically goes through piece by piece, step by step, uh, tack by tack, what you need to know in terms of saddling up your mule correctly, correct placement, correct pressures, correct tack, 
and why things work that way. So it's not just telling you what you're supposed to do, but it also explains why you want to do it as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, got a couple more folks watching. Uh, Cocopelli Mountain Ranch, Terry from Bellevue, Colorado watching. Uh, Sarah just chimed in. Sarah, we answered your question right at the get-go of the show. So go back at the end of the show and your question, uh, Steve took some time to answer it. I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh, and just to give you a little answer, yes, definitely the feed. Um, Scott is, uh, is still watching and he's got the question, best way to teach a mule to stand quietly? Yep. Come along, Hitch. Not hobbles. Come along, Hitch. Folks, when the nose goes, so goes the feet. But the nose is going to go first. So with the come along hitch on the mule, when the mule looks off to the right, bump. If he looks off to the left, bump. If he tries to back up, bump, bump, bump. You know, the idea is he needs to understand that when he moves his feet, his nose is going to pay the price. But folks, the nose goes first. That's important to remember. So when you see the nose go, next going to happen is going to be the feet. So the the got put the come along hitch on there. Watch that video that I that I send out with my uh, uh, that package that that ground problem mule video. Package. Yeah, and that video shows you how to do it. But that's the best way to do it. All right, that's from the ground. Do your groundwork first. Yep. If you if you've got control from the ground, you're putting yourself in a place to succeed, having control from the saddle. If you don't have control on the ground. It's, uh, it's a, a fool's errand to consider being able to have control from the saddle. So um, yeah. I'm going to put a link to this Mule Ground Foundation starting kit. So many people have gotten this and gotten yeah. so much out of it. Uh, so it comes with the come-along rope. So you can run that come-along hitch. comes with an mm -hmm. adjustable rope halter, uh, either regular or draft. And then it comes with the problem mule video, building a, building a new foundation, um, which is just really good step-by-step instructions for establishing the basics with your animal and then being able to go back to it and do tune-ups uh, when yep. necessary. Uh, let's see here. So next question that we got, uh, this one comes from Jan. Jan says, my biggest issue with my saddle donk is loading. Any tips? What are some of the problems that folks will encounter when loading and what are some tips for them, Steve? Well, you know, tip number one, don't have two horse trailers. I mean the two head, two horse straight in, in line trailers. Just that thing, that dinosaur needs to go. There's a lot of animals gotten hurt in that thing. The side by side is great. Gives them a lot of room. Uh, it's scary in there. You know, they can't, they can't figure things out. So number one thing we do, Dave, is since they are having a hard time, it's always disrespect of the halter very very important so uh, do the come along hitch work and uh, build a foundation and learn how to use it the next thing is when it comes down to uh, trailer loading it's not just the come along rope uh, we have a trailer loading uh, video that we've done and we have it in digital form or we have it in dvds because dvds i guess are going to the past so <laughs> we're starting to go digital now it's amazing to see all this transition uh, from from the great big uh, 45 record players and 33 and this sort of thing down to digital goes across the wire. It's incredible. You know? Listen, it is crazy. You know, one of the things I find fascinating, um, get a little bit off topic here, but uh, the cables that run from the mainland of the United States underneath the ocean, through the ocean over to Hawaii, all the cables to run data and all of this information, it just... It's just miles and miles and miles, and it yep. sends all of that data within seconds. So Incredible. our friends over in Hawaii can can you know make a purchase, whether it's from us yep. or anywhere else, and within seconds yep. be streaming and watching um, over a hard line connection coming underneath. It's <laughs> it is it is wild to think it, about. It, it's, yeah, it is absolutely incredible. I I still remember in Michigan sitting and watching the first guy land on the moon. And the old guy that was with us was uh, was was uh, Lyon, Bill Lyons was his name, and he's sitting there watching that, watching that first man on the moon, saying, "I get to see this in my lifetime." Boy, he blows his mind if you see what I've seen now. You yeah. Know, 
Who would ever thought you'd have a telephone that looks like this? You know, I know it. It's telephone incredible. Is, it, 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 more more horsepower in this little phone than yep. in the computers that that sent the shuttle to the moon. You know, isn't that something? It's crazy. Wow. It's yeah, crazy. It is. Um, Scott says, thank you. Uh, Kate says, we need street Steve over here in Australia. We've got a lot of brush fires. Well, he's going to be coming out there. Steve, bring yeah. your firefighter equipment out there. Oh, they probably won't let you che check that on the airplane, will they? No. Well, you know, they probably would. Uh, you oh, know, you know what they may? First responders. Yeah, because, yeah, first responders, uh, you know, I've got my credentials. I can show them my card and stuff. But, yeah, we, we you know, our firefighters uh, – Go all over the United States, you know, there especially you during brush fire time. Uh, when nine one one hit, we had firefighters from all over the world that came That's to that. Right. It's yeah. absolutely true. Um, okay, let's see. We've got uh, so that was a question from Jan. Um, oh, now, I am coming. To, I'm coming to Australia in March. Yep. Yep. Put another going to be the there. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, Susie uh, from Upper Michigan watching. Susie, it's good to have you here, Lori. In the truck with the trailer. Oh, Facebook just made another con. It's Steve. I'm telling you, it is jumping all over today. Uh, in the no. truck with the trailer. Don't worry. Ray's driving on the way home from a driving lesson with Mr. Nikki, who was absolutely spot on. Perfect, Lori. Thank you for taking some time. Hope you guys oh, are Lord. having a good drive. Um, yeah. Yolanda says mules don't stink, and uh, so if anybody <laughs> out there is making the claim that mules stink, Yolanda is here to set you straight. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Rebecca's watching says hello Lori Ray and Nikki great to see you guys listening to Steve and Dave uh, let's keep going here um, uh, let's see uh, da, 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 da. Linda says okay man they're, they're talking everyone's talking back and forth to one another and so I'm trying to sort through here and find uh, let's see wow. I feed grass in the morning so this is Susan Callahan I feed grass in the morning and lake and light pellets at night. So on that lake and light conversation we are having there, is good that is that is that okay? Switch up the yeah, switch up the. That uh, works good as long as your meal is used to that digestive system, folks. You don't want to just change your meals over just overnight. You know, once they get used to a feeding program, they'll do fine. Like when I was training a lot and I had my meals. I fed everything at night, everything that they needed. I fed them at night. Next morning, I went to work. That's what I did. We started training because I didn't want to have to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, feed breakfast, you know. So, you know. Yep. Uh, Casey's watching from Granger, Texas. Good to have you here, Casey. Karen Heatwall, I'm happy to be watching again. Karen, we are happy to have you. Uh, a lot of people out there. We got a lot of people today. I think that time zone change last week kind of threw things off. Uh Let's see. We've got John Deaton from Fort Smith, Arkansas watching. We've got um, Warren says, Susan, I hit my 20 years. So Susan retired from uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, Susan, I hit my 20 years, January 1st. Might do another five. Congratulations and thank you for your service. Indeed. Uh, David Cantors is watching from Port Angeles, Washington. Misty here, 50 degrees. Tell me about supplements for my colic or for colic. Are they needed or am I just wasting my time? Ah, uh, yeah, now yeah, you don't really supplements for colic. I haven't really seen anything that really works. Here's the thing, folks: colic can be from something as simple as water. Uh, it can be something as as really unique as weather changes. You know, they can it can happen. The best thing you can do is watch your meals, feed and water. Uh, I can't tell you to do that enough, folks. Make sure they got their separate corrals. Watch their feed and water, you know, and, and this sort of thing. It makes all the difference in the world. But also, I like to tell you to keep around banamine. Banamine is my favorite thing when there's a colic problem because it's like a big old aspirin. It makes the muscles relax, and that releases the, the, uh, the uh, intestines, intestines and does a good job. And I like to give it, personally, I like to give it intermuscular or uh, in the in the vein, you know, IV. Very good. Um, all right, let's keep moving here. Yeah, lots of comments, lots of lots of activity today. Wow. Uh, Linda <laughs> chiming back in says Theo is eleven and he's super broken gentle. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we've got David Pengelly. The come along hitch is everything. It's the only tool you need. <laughs> the best training tool ever. 
And uh, it's yeah, like the I'll best go. coffee ever. That's right. Come along, coffee yeah. link coming soon. I'll put it in there. Tracy yeah. uh, Tracy Foley is watching from Lake Como, Pennsylvania, eighteen degrees. Yeah. I uh, hope Ooh. you know how to survive 18 degrees because I would have no idea. We're glad you're here, Tracy. Uh, let's see. Carla Carla comments again, my poor little mule. He hated the straight load. Unfortunately, had a trainer. Uh, he forced him. It was sick. I sold it to someone who with llamas. He does great in our four horse. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, let's ah. see. Chase from Beaver, Utah, watching. Eric Lynn. Hey, how's it going there, Eric Lynn? Hey, Y'all, yeah. I'm going to put a link to uh, Mountain Ridge Gear. And uh, if you want some of the best mule hats in the universe, uh, <laughs> go over here. Check this out at Mountain Ridge Gears. Eric is the one who sells the hat Steve wears, the uh, original ATV all-terrain vehicle, and that is the mule. You got it right there? What's going on right there? Nope, nope. This one's different. This is Apache Trail Auto Body. All right. This used to be my, this used to be my body shop. People don't know that, Steve. And yeah, I, I used to be in the auto body collision business. I even rode my horses to work uh, in my younger days. Uh, but this was my body shop, and this is what paid for my uh, learning to, to have mules and saddles and stuff like that. And eventually, we got rid of the body shop, and uh, I started cowboying full time. Yada yada. But, you know, yep, that's one of the things. So today I'm doing wrench work, you know, working on my uh, on my uh, carburetor, on my generator. And uh, that's why I'm dressed like I am. I just went ahead and I usually put a long sleeve shirt over top of this and then do my work. But I just pulled it off because it was really greasy and my wife didn't want me to be in here in a greasy <laughs> shirt. <laughs> that's right. Say no to the greasy. Uh, no let's see here. Uh, let's see, uh, Eric, it's good to have you here. So y'all go check out Eric's uh, website. Uh, Jan chimes back in, says, okay, th she was having the questions about, um, uh, mounting. Okay, thanks. I have two horse slant, not, or, uh, not a straight slant. Guess I have much to check out on that video. Thanks much. Bill Roll Rose. Hey, hi fellas. Sharing mules of Ohio. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Chase has a question. He says, any clinics plan for Utah. I don't think we have any planned up in the Utah area, but I think if uh, nope. Chase wanted to host one, we could. Yeah, there you go. How does that work? Well, basically it works that, uh, uh, you know, when I'm doing my tours, which I'm not doing anymore, uh, I try to set it up and go from state to state to state to state to state. But then I do have some people, like a guy called me the other day from San Francisco, and they fly me in, and... Uh, we uh, we uh, we have a couple day clinic, and then I fly back out, and that that's usually the way it works. Or if there's some important hunting going on in an area, I I tend to do a, a pretty good clinic there really quick. <laughs> not, you know. I'll bet, I'll bet. Uh, so there you go, Chase. Uh, you know what? Utah's not too far away from Arizona, depending on nope. whereabouts you are. Uh, we do a clinic out here this. Uh, this uh, this late winter, early spring, you might enjoy coming out, getting some of the, the sunshine here, especially with it being cold up there in Utah. So keep an eye yeah. on Steve's website. Uh, Tracy says uh, Carhartt is king. So what's yeah. Carhartt? Yeah. Carhartt is a type of clothing uh, uh, that's really good for your cold weather and cowboying and, and this sort of thing. But Carhartt, bib overalls uh, or pants. Man, they do keep you warm and they keep you comfortable. Very good. Um, okay, Kate says, hi, you missed my question about my donkey. Kate, let me see here. Question. I did not see. Kate, would you mind posting it again? I'm scrolling through and I do not see a question about a donkey. And I don't doubt that I missed it. So uh, if you would take a second to put that back in there, we will make sure to get to it. we got about 10 minutes left here, so we got plenty of time. Thanks for bringing that up to my attention. Yeah. And, yeah, folks, if we miss something, um, Steve, I actually think Facebook's making changes to um, to the Facebook Live today because uh, right here in the, middle of, uh, in the middle of our broadcast, like my interface in front of me is changing. Like what I see is different, so – they're making some changes. Who knows? They could, it's bouncing around. If I missed your question, it is certainly not intentional. 
Um, there's yeah. a lot of stuff going on here that uh, usually doesn't happen. Uh, Linda says, opinions about the different types of mules for different purposes. Um, Theo is a quarter horse. Mammoth Jack cross 15-3 and trained for riding. Other recommendations for crossing different breeds of mares and jacks? Disposition, disposition, disposition. It's not so much the breed, folks, as it is the disposition. You know, I can't tell you that enough. I had uh, one of my uh, friends and longtime friend and client up in Michigan went down to Ohio to look at a couple of mules that were supposed to be uh, belonged to a lady that's, that her husband said to get rid of them. They're a, pro a problem. Anyway, he goes down and they're a real problem. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and their poor disposition, you know, so he just, he walked away from them. Yeah, so when you're looking at one disposition, probably my favorite ride is going to be a Fox Trotter. Awesome. Uh, so Eric just put a comment. He says, I wrote a blog on my side about Steve and how he came to learn about the come along roach, uh, come along rope. And I'm going to, I just found it, Eric. So, uh, y'all check out this article by Eric, uh, about, Steve, uh, the come along rope. So I'm going to put that in the comment section. Y'all can go check that out. Uh, very, very cool, Eric. I'll have to read that a little bit later. Uh, one thing I've got here, um, I want to make sure folks know that we are looking, we're constantly sharing pictures on Instagram and Facebook and um, on the website of just f folks and their mules. We love sharing photos of these mules and their owners from all over the place. So I'm going to put a link in the comment section right now and of course usually I put the links down there uh, if you want to go learn more about something well this one I'm gonna ask uh, that y'all do me a favor do me and Steve a favor uh, I want I want you to take this link that I'm about to share and I want you to follow it and I, I'm gonna put it in uh, now and I'm gonna put it in at the broadcast and I want you to on your phone if you're watching and then on your computer if you're watching on there I want you to upload some photos for us to share um, and just kind of tell the little bit of a story about your animal. It would be really great yeah. to have mm -hmm. some awesome photos come in. And these phones these days, they've just got incredible cameras. Ooh. So if you've got pictures on your phone, um, go ahead and just upload them straight there from your phone and I will share it. So I'm going to put a link down here, upload your photos. Um, and uh, there's, a little, there's a little form to fill out just because we want to make sure it's you. We want to make sure we have the right permissions. Uh, go ahead and uh, and fill that out and upload uh, upload some photos. That way, we've got some uh, some more photos that we can share on Instagram. And I think we've got I don't know three thousand something followers over on Instagram, uh, and they love finding those photos. So we want to give them more of that. Um, okay, uh, Neil Campbell watching. Good afternoon, y'all. It's cold and snowy here in Peshtigo, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, that's that's the theme that we've been getting here, Neil, is that it is cold and snowy in a lot of places across the United States today. And, uh, of course, out here in Arizona, it's a little bit warmer uh, than it has been. What you got there? Oh, why oh, don't you talk to hey. us a little bit, Steve? Why oh. don't you talk to us? Have I got news for you. I have another brand new saddle. Now... The saddle that you saw last time was the Cowboy Heritage. It's the original, how I used to do them, and they are now being sold. I've got several working cowboys that have been using these saddles and love them. Eric uh, uh, Palmer is one of them that has one of my these saddles. But anyway, this saddle now only weighs 19 pounds. It's all leather, super soft leather, very, very soft leather. And folks, you help me out with the name on that other saddle, the Cowboy Heritage. I need a hand with this one. This saddle has got really great leather. It's an all wood fiberglass tree. And it is flat comfortable. But I need a name for it. And I'm thinking about calling it um, uh, the Mule Rider. And I'm thinking about that. And then I thought about maybe calling it the Canyon Rider. But I need help. It's 18, 19 pounds. And it's uh, awesome. All It's got the same tree on it. It's just that now that, that tree is wood with fiberglass. And we've, we've done some really great work with the leather. And this leather is awesome. All right. So 
I'm continuing to have Facebook issues. It keeps booting me around here, there, and everywhere. I'm trying to get wow. back and uh, get into making sure that I see everybody's comments and questions. Okay. Okay, I just got back in, and uh, I, think I, I think I got everything. Now, over here on YouTube, Kate just posted her question, so let's get that. Kate's question, she says, Hi, my donkey lives in a one-anchor paddock permanently. So how much exercise should be given, and also how often should I feed him as there is nothing but dust in the paddock I live in, Australia? <laughs> nothing but dust. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, well, obviously, he can't suck on dust. He'll, you know, anyway, so. At yes, least you shouldn't. Shouldn't suck on dust. Should, but, you know, these donkeys can live on anything. They can, I think they can suck air and be fat. So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what type of grass. I think you've got coastal grass there. You might want to consider that and uh, and feed that. But, you know, here's what you got to do, folks. you got to feed according to their weight. So you take a, a donkey that probably weighs around, uh, let's just call him six to 700 pounds. You're going to want to feed him about three pounds in the morning, three pounds in the evening. And, and then, but just keep an eye on him. That's why it's so important. Keep an eye on their feet. What color is the manure? You want a nice, rich, bright green and shiny uh, in the water. You want to watch the urine. You want to watch. That'll all tell you how you're feeding or feeding correct. And then sometimes an acre is plenty of room for the animal to walk around on in and gives it quite a bit of exercise. But the favorite thing I like to do with a donkey, hook them up to a cart and drive them. So get your little cart, hook them up, and go. You can train them within hours. They're super smart. That's great. Uh, all right, let's see here. I think that is just, a, I think we've covered everything. I don't wow. see any questions that are that are hanging out there. Yeah, Steve, how about that? We covered everything with three Good. minutes to spare. Now, if you yeah. all have any final questions, do feel free to put them in there. Um, yeah. And uh, as long as we got uh, time here before we sign off, uh, we'll get to them there. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, uh, and then we also got to think about the holidays are coming up here, Dave. That's right. So, yeah. with I'm the actually, holidays, what's that? Yeah. I'm actually going to be... I'm actually going to be gone for about two weeks uh, in December. And so I'm thinking we probably ought to just call this the last show and, and until the first of the year, then we'll start up again. I think that's what we're going to do. What I had plans to do was uh, this would be our last live show of the year. But here's the really cool thing. Um, I don't know exactly how many of these we've done. It has been a lot. And... Mm -hmm. We have more folks watching now than we ever have before. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back and take some of our older sessions, some of our older broadcasts, and I'm going to schedule those to be played um, in the coming weeks. So it'll be a live stream in terms of wow. we'll be pushing the video out there. Uh, but Steve and I will be off doing you know what we have pl plans for holidays. But we'll keep putting out content um, so that you can watch it, you can get in front of it, and you can have your Steve and Dave time. Even if it's not live, we will push it out live. You can get your Steve and Dave time, uh, sit up there on the, uh, on the sofa, get the fire lit, get yourself some come along yeah. coffee, kick your shoes off, and just, in, and just enjoy the smooth sound of Steve, Steve Edwards and Dave Shrine talking mules and donkeys for 60 minutes every Wednesday. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> That's great. I, you know, I've had more people, Dave, contact me and said, you know, that Dave, he does a good job of working with that show. You know, <laughs> and, uh, I've had some of them think you were my son because you're almost as good looking as I am. You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, I would, I would be honored. It, we, we have a, a father son, uh, yes, father son wow. dynamic going on here, and it's, it's yes, a lot sir. of fun. Um, yeah, you know what? It's, it's, it's interesting. I've learned so much about mules and donkeys. Of course, I have to make it clear that I know it because I've heard it. So I'm not out on the ranch um, learning and experiencing because there is a completely different, it's a completely different thing to know it than it is to go out there and experience it. So every opportunity I get, um, it's mm -hmm. funny. So if, if any of y'all are watching and you feel like, gosh, it makes so much sense to me when I'm listening to the broadcast and Steve's talking about it, 
But then when I go out there, I just seem to forget. Well, that, that's what's happened to me. I, I, I've been exposed to just about as much mule and donkey training as one person uh, could ever be exposed to. And when I'm out there with the animals, I just seem to kind of freeze up a little bit. And I look to Steve, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? So it's been, it's been really enjoyable to kind of get to take all the head knowledge that I've gained and in the pockets of time that I have to interact with the animals, actually see it interact. But uh, it's also been very, very helpful for me to be able to encourage people and say, folks, you're not just going to get it when you go out there. You hear it, go out there, do it. Uh, it's going to take some time. You may get some yeah. things that come more naturally and you just get it and it's good and, and that's great when it happens. But if you get out there and you're like, well, Steve said I should be doing this, I'm doing this, and it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, you know what? That, that, to me, that just, that just shows that, hey, you know what? You're doing something new for the first time. Get back out there. Try it over and over again, and eventually yep. it'll come to you. Ain't that right, Steve? Yeah. Just watch, just watch the details you know, and, and this sort of thing. It's not that big of a deal. You don't need to be a professional trainer to train on these mules. You don't, folks. Matter of fact, a lot of people have really screwed some awful nice mules up simply because they're using the horse techniques, you know. Um, but it's, it's, it's been fun, Dave. I, I was talking to with a guy that was a packer up in Selway. Now, this is up in uh, northern Idaho, and he's packed all his life. He's cowboyed all his life. And he sent me some notes here and there and some nice cards. But he said, you know, Steve, I, I've been doing this all my life. And he says, I, I'm beginning to think I just barely know just a little bit. He says, I keep hearing you. And I think, wow, that's the answer to my question. I've never really saw it that way. And then, like everybody else, he's using a horse saddle, starts soaring his mule, and uh, starts saying, well, what's going on? Well, before, they always just thought sores were just part of it, you know. But then he started reading my stuff and seeing some of the articles, and, and away, we, away we go. But anyway, it's time to quit, huh, buddy? Yeah, well, you know what? So, like I said, Facebook was giving me some issues, and all of a sudden, a rush of questions just came in. So let's see if we can pound through them real quick, okay? Great. This, this one's from Warren. He says, I just got back from an elk hunt in Wyoming. It turned cold and snowed, negative 13. Burr. Do you use anything on their shoes for traction? Additionally, Sydney is 15 hands, pretty comfortable except going downhill. Even when downhill isn't super steep, she gets all stiff-legged and is miserable. Thoughts? So we've got yeah. the shoes for traction and yeah. then getting stiff-legged going downhill. Yeah, well, the stiff-legged going downhill means you didn't adjust your breeching so they can set on that breeching to hold the saddle back. So what's happening is is the saddle is hitting the scapula like this, and she's trying to get around it. So that's what's happening. Uh, and and the, my shoes, I use Borium. Uh, and that's something that's welded on the toes and on the heels. And here's the thing, folks. One of the problems with those shoes, you, you when you when you go into the snow country, always trim your mules short, real short. Because the problem is, the snow starts getting up there and balling, and pretty soon they've got they've got a, a a snow cone on the bottom of their hoof that looks like this, you know, and so uh, that's that's the two helpful things that'll help you. Uh, quick question from Nancy: At what age will mammoth jennies still breed? So maybe how how long can you breed them until? I've I've seen them breed at all ages, you know, way way into their twenties, you know. That's good. All right, let's see here, make sure we get all of them. Amy asks, what brand nippers do you recommend? This is uh, Amy Gann, so Nat's mom? Uh, yep, yep. Uh, what brand nippers? I, I went and I lost the name for them. Um, oh, golly. Nippy nippers? Nippy nippers, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you knucklehead. Uh, oh, what's the name of that nippers? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Amy, I'll, uh, I'll text you. I can't, th I can't think of it. It's, it's like UL, um, you know, what's going to oh. happen as soon as we, as soon as I hit the end button, yeah. it, as soon as I'll I hit remember. the end button, Steve will go up. Oh, it was that. Yeah. Yeah. Send a text there, Amy, or uh, Steve will get, Steve will get in touch with you. Luke asked a question. Hi, Steve. Any tips for riding in the dark? Maybe shy of, uh, night vision. Yeah, well, yeah. I I tell you, I use a headlight on my on my hat a lot, but I pretty much just let the mules feel their way through. As long as you can kind of see what's going on, but I like to put a headlight on and see. It's uh, some um, they they've got some great ones out there that today, uh, but I use a headlight. 
Uh, Bill asks, when was the Mule Clinic this winter once again? Uh, Bill, we are finalizing dates. Uh, Steve and I are coordinating our schedules to make sure that he's available and I'll be available to go out there and, uh, and record. So we are coordinating and we'll get that out. So make sure that you are subscribed to Steve's uh, muleranch.com email. You can send a message to support at muleranch.com and I'll be sure to add you if you're not already receiving these messages. Um, let's see here. That's everything. We did it. How about that? We did it. All right. So from uh, from myself and uh, Mr. Steve Edwards, we want to thank you all for spending uh, your Wednesdays with us here for the last several months. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, there's lots of stuff that we want to do here coming in 2020. So uh, really what we need from you all is, uh, is, number one, to keep sending in your questions. Um, I'm going to put a link here in a second to send in pictures of your mule. Uh, we would want those. And then on top of that, we need you to tell all your friends about what we're doing. Um, your network is much bigger than our network, and, and we're working real hard to, to make sure that folks can find what they're looking for. Uh, but in the coming months, to make 2020 just a, an incredible year for the mule and for the donkey, uh, we're just going to ask that you tell all your friends, that you, you take the extra time to send links, share broadcasts, connect with us on Facebook, leave comments, do everything uh, that we can to grow and expand the influence of the little community that we've started here so that more and more people uh, can see that something special is happening and, uh, and we'll invite their friends to come in. And, uh, and in that way, we'll make sure that mule and donkey folks know that they're not alone, uh, that there are communities out there of people who really want to help, uh, you know, help you know, connect us together uh, so that it's not just all about the horse. We love horses. There's a good place for them. There's a lot of places for them. We want a place for the mule and for the donkey and for their owners. So uh, right. thank you so much for watching. Steve, anything you want to say here? Yeah, I keep looking for my nippers on, on here. I, I, of course, I have to go down to the barn to get the name of them. But uh, uh, I will we'll make sure we have it on our on our next show. And I will call, I will text Amy and and uh, and take care of that. So there we go. She, 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 uh oh. All right, we'll see you later. All right, y'all. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, a Merry Christmas. We'll see you in the new year. Still, we'll yeah. still be on Facebook. We'll still be on Instagram. So interact with with us there. We'll talk soon. Bye bye now. Yep, we'll see you next year.